Qualcomm is the name behind the name. While average consumers may not recognize who Qualcomm is, it's very likely that they use devices every day that are powered by Qualcomm. Hi, I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet, and joining me is Bill Detweiler, who is the Managing Editor for Tech Republic, and Natalie Gagliorti, who is a staff writer for ZDNet. Both Bill and Natalie attended Qualcomm's CES keynote, and they're here to tell us how it went. What were the big announcements? So the big announcement out of Qualcomm's press conference has to do with the debut of its Bluetooth audio system on chip. Um, and it's pitched by Qualcomm um, as a way to reduce power consumption and double the processing power within small form factor audio devices like wireless earbuds or headsets. Um, now the two key things with this, they're saying that um, the chip will help reduce the size and the battery life, or improve the battery life, but then also make these devices capable of more smart technology like biometric sensing, um, voice uh, assistant technology, um, and more um, hearable technology for the hearing impaired. So we didn't see any new product announcements when it comes to the always connected PCs as Qualcomm is calling these devices. They did, however, highlight how important the mobile computing sector is to their business going forward. You know, we saw the Windows 10 laptops that are going to be running the Snapdragon 835 processor late last year at an unveiling event that Qualcomm had then, and new devices are going to be coming out running the Snapdragon 845 processor later in 2018. And these devices could be really attractive to business professionals as they promise 24-hour battery life, constant connectivity, all in a lightweight package that's easy to carry on your next business trip. Because Qualcomm is the name behind the name, did they share any news about new partner relationships? And if so, what those partnerships might mean in the way of new products and capabilities? Uh, Qualcomm made a bevy of partnership announcements during their press conference. Um, on the automotive side, the company says it's working with Land Rover and Jaguar. It's going to use the Snapdragon to power telematic and infotainment systems in their future vehicles. Um, there's also a new partnership with Honda. Um, Qualcomm says it's going to be providing the connected car technology in the 2018 Accord. Um, and there's another partnership with Chinese automaker BYD for the upcoming um, digital cluster in their car powered by the Snapdragon. Um, there's also some news surrounding Qualcomm's partnerships with Google, HTC, Sony, and Samsung. This is all tied to the radio frequency front end platform. Um, and then the company also made some UI partnerships with Microsoft Cortana, Google Assistant, and the Amazon Alexa. We know that connectivity was a big theme this year. Were there any announcements related to their focus on IoT devices or a connected home or business? Yeah, for sure. So IoT was a central theme of Qualcomm's presentation, and according to the company, accounted for over a billion dollars in revenue in fiscal year 2017. Announcements included a new low-power Bluetooth audio sock for use in wireless headsets, like the ones Natalie already mentioned. Announcements also included support for Amazon Alexa, Microsoft Cortana, uh, Google Assistant, and Android Things as part of their new smart audio platform, which is designed to be put in devices like smart speakers. Were there any mentions of enhancing user or device security in their product announcements? Yeah, security was definitely on a lot of people's minds, especially with the news of the Spectre and Meltdown vulnerabilities. At the end of the conference, someone asked about the new Secure Processing Unit, or SPU, that's going to be built into the Snapdragon 845 SOC. You know, this is designed to securely store information, like fingerprint data, uh, to provide secure execution of applications, and to be a platform upon which developers can build. Uh, and Qualcomm believes that it can help incorporate security um, into business processes because a smartphone is often involved somewhere in the transmission of data, whether it's at a consumer facing point or at the back end in a B2B uh, transaction. Late last year, Qualcomm announced that Snapdragon 835 was being used in several Windows 10 laptops and convertibles. Were there any new announcements related to these kinds of mobile devices? You know, I think it's too early for a consensus to have formed in the tech community, 
But as Larry Dignan wrote about in his analysis of Broadcom's offer, you know, scale matters when it comes to chip manufacturing. And if Broadcom can combine its assets with Qualcomm's connectivity and processing assets, and by extension, NXP's automotive products and sensors, then the new combined company can definitely put more pressure on Samsung and Intel.